I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the Outrunner Spiral product line that Spantex makes. These spirals are very popular. Uh, they're they're uh, much more flexible and easier to clean than the old drum style spirals are. And they, they provide a method of, of really gentle handling for your product. So to show you how this idea works, I'm going to take this piece of tubing here and let's, let's pretend that it's a, it's a conveyor in your world. And uh, your path uh, needs to follow along this, this long piece of tubing for some reason. What an outrunner does is it, it takes, takes this long distance that you need to travel and it wraps it around in a, in a circle like a corkscrew, just like this. Right? And, and your product was going to follow that path in an outrunner spiral. I wound this one so it's going uphill, so it's gaining elevation. But by the same token, I can turn around and build one just the opposite of it, and it goes downhill. So that, that's the basic fundamental idea of, of what an outrunner spiral does. What's unique about the way an outrunner handles product is, is that there's no, no outward pressure exerted on a, the product like there is in a wedge unit. You don't have to tilt it uh, like trying to go up 18 or 20 or 30 degrees on a high friction incline. You, you don't have any top pressure, which you would have with a, a topper unit. Sometimes you can't have those things. Like in the case of butter, you know, customer wants to fill this. Uh, probably going to be a little warm, but when he gets done, he wants the butter inside to be level and consistent, not tipped to one side or the other. So, so in a case like this, uh, outrunners work really well. Uh, also, they, they get that uh, a little time cooling factor in there. In many cases, you need an extended period of time for cooling a product. Uh, butter may come out from a filling machine that's still warm. You want to take it down to ambient temperature before you pack it. Uh, outrunner spirals can do that. And at the same time, outrunner spiral can get elevate, cross an aisle, come back down on the other side. Other applications for it are for uh, these spirals can be built in speeds from zero up to 250 feet a minute, 75 meters a minute, curing. Sometimes products just need a little time delay to cure. Outrunner spiral, always controlled by variable frequency drives. We never run these outrunner spirals directly across the line. The reason is, is that there's a lot of momentum here and there's a lot of weight involved, and we want to always soft start and soft stop an outrunner spiral. Also, the another benefit is, is when we have this, this VFD on board with the outrunner spiral, we can wire the safety clutch through it and use it for a stopping purpose in the event the clutch kicks out. Outrunner spirals can be built with plain chain or with high friction chain if you want to go up steeper. We've built uh, outrunners up to uh, 18 degrees incline. The decline limit is at 4 degrees, however, and that has to do with how the outrunner spirals uh, interface with the declining chain. All right, I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about the nomenclature, the name that we use for these outrunner spirals. So the first one I'm going to draw, I'm going to say it comes in like this. It goes out like that. The key thing here is I'm always looking from top. Okay, so the words relate to being top down. The spiral... The product's going to enter here, it's going to go around, round, 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 whatever, it's going to come out up here. Direction of rotation is here. So what we would call this is clockwise up. Okay, very simple. I look from the top, I enter here, I go clockwise, I exit here same line. That's called clockwise up. Okay, now I'm going to draw the next one for you here. I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. I'm going to come here, except this time I'm going to go this way and go out. Product comes in here, goes around and around and around, goes out. Correction rotation is here. 
I'm looking down from the top. And as I'm sure you figured out by now, this is called counterclockwise up. Okay, looking from the top, counterclockwise rotation, and I'm going up. Okay, I'm going to draw next one for you. There are four of these primaries. I'm going to come in here this time. Looking from the top. This is going down. Okay, I skip over my line there. I'm turning this way. This is called clockwise down. Very simple. And I'm going to do one more. I'm sure you know what it's going to be. I'm going to go this way. I'm going downhill. I've got a hidden line there. I'm rotating this way. I'm looking from the top. I'm going down. So it's called counterclockwise down. Those are the four primary methods of identifying outrunner spirals. Now, the next part I'm going to show you is what we call the degree of rotation. And there are four different degrees of rotation. This is not complicated. Don't worry about up or down. I'm just going to draw this one. Okay? Also, looking from the top, we call this zero degrees. This line is zero degrees. Now, if I take this off, and I go out this way, you know the answer. We call that 90 degrees. And it just keeps going. This one is 180 degrees. And there's one more way we can do this. we can actually come out over here and go this way. This is called 270 degrees. So again, there are four different exit angles that you can come up with, and there are four different names for them. Very simple. We have clockwise up, clockwise down, counterclockwise up, counterclockwise down. And then you add the angle of exit that you want. And that defines the nomenclature on an outrunner spiral.